one of the things that separates humans from every other being that exists is that humans alone worship from all the excavations from all the uh, video footage that we have of animals all over the world now and in the past you've never seen an altar built by monkeys even though a monkey is so close some of its monkeys in i don't know what it is chromosomes or whatever it is they never have built an altar to worship god you don't find that among the birds you don't find it among the giraffes you don't excavate and finally find a bunch of animals with an altar there that's one of the things that separates us from every other being um so in terms of teaching our children what makes us unique it's a very easy thing to do just look around in nature have you ever seen an animal worshiping getting a bunch of crows to build an altar whatever it is any way to worship and the more the animals are closer to looking like us in terms of their body structure or their standing on two legs or whatever it is dogs cats do all kinds of crazy things but they never make an altar god said in genesis chapter 1 let us make man in his in our image and the way i understand that image was let us make man and woman with this desire to connect to connect so that we can look in the monkey we can look at the snake we can look at the giraffe and say no not like us and we look everywhere in skull in the, in the world and we're like not like us there's something inside of us that says i'm looking for that image i'm looking for that connection god made me in that image um one philosopher in the olden days said that god has made us with that vacuum in our hearts um there's a little bit of that desire for him that no other animal no part of god's creation has it is out of that that worship comes so worship comes from that point of connection so when we say that we have to worship god that's not a christian thing it's a human thing god has created all of us to want to worship it's in every single human being now the question is who or what will we worship it's a whole in every single human being cuz god said let us create man and woman in that image so the moment a baby is born that born baby is born with a hole a spiritual hole that says i want that connection with and the babies do not know the humans don't know what it needs a connection with adam and eve knew it but because of sin that's been blocked jesus came to create that hole when you look when we look at our neighbors when we look at our coworkers we all have that hole when we look at ourselves we all have that hole the question is how is that hole being filled money is a big one looks beauty career houses land back in the day it used to be cows and bulls and now it's cars and something else clothes uh retirement so many things because we are trying to figure out who or what we worship and we're trying to figure out what we do with that hole in our heart and the christian message is that god can fill that hole in our heart and that god alone can fill that hole but we won't go to god to fill that hole in our heart if we fill it with other things and that is the reason why prosperity 
is so bad. Not, I shouldn't say that. I'm sorry. I, I crossed that sentence out. It's why prosperity is so dangerous. Prosperity is not bad. Please forgive me for saying that. Prosperity is not bad, but prosperity is very dangerous. Um, to, be, to seek for prosperity is very dangerous. Um, because we're all prosperous. You know, and so we shouldn't say that it's bad, but it's very dangerous. We are in the top 1% or 0.1% of the world. But prosperity is very dangerous because it has that tendency to fill the hole in our heart which was meant to be filled by God in worship. And air conditioning helps with that hole. Checkbooks that don't run dry because your paycheck is greater than your bills fills that hole. Health in our children and in our families can fill that hole. Career progress, answers to prayer can fill that hole and somehow stop this heart from saying, I have a need. And um, the question then is, what will fill that hole and that hole in my heart that makes me a true worshiper of God. And that is where the Christians have to be so radical to keep emptying ourselves. And God, you know, I like that picture of the potter. Um, if I were to use that analogy, he's coming into this pot which is so filled with filth of self and he's willing to put his hand and gets his hand dirty to clean up that muck crusted with filth to dig that up so that we can recognize that there's a hole that we need to have. So he's not breaking us in order to destroy us. He's breaking us to get that hardened filth out so that that hole can be there. And that hole can be filled with him. So it's not a negative thing. It's a positive thing. The only thing that is a bad thing is when we give up. Dear brothers, it'll be hard. Dear sisters, it can be very difficult. I tell my children, the only wrong thing you can tell me is I quit. I'm giving up. Right? And... It's too difficult to understand certain subjects. It's too difficult to do it. Don't quit. Don't give up. It's the only wrong thing you can say. Um, and God is trying to clean us up from the inside to create that hole. And the hole can be so filled by other things. And it can be a um, very helpless place to be when we have that hole, except if we trust God and his word, that he will fill us with the Holy Spirit to fill that hole. And he created us in that image. I want to say this respectfully. Do you believe, I believe that the Trinity, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, have a hole in each of their hearts. If you want to just use my analogy, God doesn't have a heart. But if you want to picture them as persons, they all have a hole in the heart. Who fills that hole? Each other. There is no Trinity if there's no Son. There is no Trinity if there's no Holy Spirit. There is no God if there's no Father. The three are one. And so that hole is filled with each other. And to me, I feel like that that is God created us in his image with that hole that says <laughs> fellowship with me. He created us in that same thing that he has in him, which is the father never says to the son, I have no need of you. The son never says to the Holy Spirit, ah, you know, we can do without him. And though Jesus lived his whole earth, the whole time here on earth, 
It's like, I have the father. The hole in my heart is fine. You can, I don't have a place to sleep. You can call me all kinds of bad names, but as long as the hole in my heart is being filled, I'm okay. And um, God had that hole in his heart that was constantly being filled up with the love of the Trinity with each other. They fulfilled each other. But that hole is there now given to us. And the devil came and um, the tree of life was said, hey, you eat the tree of life, you eat this fruit between God and me. But instead we ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which looked good, which seemed good for food, which would make us wise. And these are the things that fill the hole. And ever since then, we as humans have been trying to fill the hole with creation and with something that God said, it's never going to fill the hole. Rich men die miserable. Well, you know, all kinds of benefits still have not happy, not joyful. We need to fill that hole. So that's the first point about worship is worship comes from the hole in our heart. Worship comes from that need and that space of I'm struggling. I have, I don't have what I need. That's the space which we can cherish as Christians where the rest of the world feel anxious and despairing or we need to fill it. We need to fill it. We need to fill it real quick. We need a vaccine very soon. We need money real soon. We need a doctor's prescription real soon. We need this thing to go away. We need that thing to go away. And not realizing that the whole has been created, allowed by God through the trials. It's been allowed by God to be filled with him, to be filled by him, to be filled by some word. And no matter how difficult the trial is, Imagine if we had the trial filled back up after six months. But when I look back at the six months, I can't say there's one word that God spoke to me in those six months, specifically because of this hole. Many things could have happened in those six months that filled up that hole or that hole finished over time. But is there even one word from God that stands out? Let's say you have been struggling with an anxiety over coronavirus. Or let's say you've been struggling in the one of your loved ones coming to the Lord. Let's say it's, you're struggling with anxiety. Let's say you're struggling with um, financial challenges. It happens to all of us at different times. Here's the question. The hole's been opened up. The hole's been opened up. Has there been even one word that God has said to you? specifically because of that hole being opened up that you can say, I'll never forget that for the rest of my life because this hole was opened up. God showed me this verse. I already knew the verse. Maybe I knew the verse, but he spoke to me in a very real way. And for the rest of my life, whenever somebody says that verse, I'll be remember, I'll remind myself of June, 2020 or September, 2020. I know, I know for the rest of my life, there are verses like that. There are emails, there are words of the week that have spoken to me over the years that I remember. There are quotes from brothers and sisters. There are statements that I remember from some of you that God used to speak to me, even in this year. That I think as far as I can remember, the rest of my life I'll never forget it because it was a word from the Lord for me in 2020. So, the, but that would never happen if there's no space opened up. The hole is not opened up. There's not going to be any space for that word to just sink in and bring life and nourish the soul. And it takes that spot of not filling it in with um, pleasures of this world or the things of this world and sticking with God and saying, God, you opened it up. It was you who allowed it, not the devil. It was you who have been watching over all of this. And saying, yeah, open up that space in Sandeep's heart. Is it going to hurt? Yeah, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt more than you can imagine. More than you can imagine. 
I'm going to sow a seed in that. I'm going to fill it up with rivers of living water. That's the purpose. And we, we distract from God's purposes. We stifle God's way because we fill it up with some, um, something else, some human attempt. I, I'll, I'll speak to my own shame. Um, many years ago, I had a difficult boss. And um, I, I feel like I didn't do badly, but I didn't ace the test. I don't think I got an A. I didn't, don't think I got an A plus in that test. And that test was for about an 18 month period. I don't think I aced it. I aced it on some days, but the other days I just didn't ace it. Why? Because I complained in my heart. Because I kept asking God, why? Why does it hurt so much? Why are you allowing this to happen? Why don't you just get my boss moved? Why don't you just give me another job? It, and I thought three months was long enough. Then I thought six months was long enough. Then I thought 12 months is long enough. How much must I live with this? And I'd claim, claim all kinds of verses and nothing would happen. And my boss would try to get rid of me. And then my client who I was consulting would say, no, 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 we want to keep you. And we want to keep you, my boss. And I'm like, I want to leave. My boss wants me to leave, but my client wants me to stay. And everything I tried wouldn't work. And now I look back and I have a very good boss. I don't want a bad boss. No part of me wants a bad boss. But I, I wish I could have aced that trial more. And all of these different trials, I look back and I say, you know, why didn't I get 100%? You know, why did I only get 80? I don't know if you know what that means, aced means. That means, you know, you have 100, 100 out of 100. Why didn't you, why didn't you get, why did you get only 80, 85? And maybe I got 60, I've got no idea. Um, but I know I didn't get 100. Because I didn't see that the hole was being opened up by God. And he spoke to me some words in that season that I remember. But I think there were more words he could have spoken to me. That's why I didn't get 100. And in every trial that I go through, I realize um, I ask too many questions of why and I don't see God and I don't look for his word to sustain me. And it's a battle, dear brothers and sisters, to worship, to become a worshiper, not to become a worshiper of reason, you know, I was touched by the tree of knowledge of good and evil was desirable to Adam and Eve because it would make them wise. And there's a lot of wisdom and logic by which we can say, God, why are you allowing this trial? And it's all reason. But it's not worship. It's not going to God and saying, God, I want this space to be opened up, to be filled up with words of God. You said, and so I did. You said, and so I believed. And um, Genesis 1 Genesis said, God said, and he turned this ugly, formless earth into this beautiful earth of oceans and flowers and mountains just by God speaking into this ugly place and God's taking these holes in our heart and he wants to speak one word and then speak another word and then speak another word and man lives by words that God spoke and Sandeep maintained his spiritual life and grew strong in his spiritual life because it was one word and then the next word and then the next word. So what has God spoken to you? I know he speaks to you every Sunday, dear brothers and sisters. I know he does. I'm sure you're listening to him. But that's not what I mean. God speaks to us and gives us um, teachings. 
And these are teachings that help protect us maybe down the road in future and all that. But I want us to think about our specific trials, the areas where you know you're weak, where the devil knows you're weak, and he keeps poking you there. And he knows that you're afraid that you may be poked too much. Or it could be an area of strength where you think you're really strong. God's devil says, you think you're strong there, huh? Okay. Let's see if I keep poking you after 10 pokes. He'll give. That's what the devil did to Job. Right? The devil, in Job's case, property didn't shape him, but boils did. And that got him to really start to complain and not trust God. So we should be sober to know, Lord, I, I want to know that I'm so weak, but when the whole is created, I want to worship. Which means I want to give, I want to know that you are real. I want to know that you are good. And I want to open up and say, speak. And then when you speak, I want to obey. That's the final act of worship which is obedience put and that's you know as we've heard abraham was the first that's the first time that word um you know is applied in a spiritual sense when abraham said i'm going to go with my son and we're going to worship she said i'm going to kill my most prized possession um offer your bodies as a living sacrifice that is worship it's that obedience to the word of god and um there's no formula. There's no one set pattern. I, you know, worship, do, obedience doesn't mean always keep your mouth shut. Um, sometimes it means speaking up. If somebody is hurting you, it may mean speaking up. Um, if you're getting angry, it may mean shutting up. And so it's not, you always shut your mouth, it's all, you always speak. No, could be different situations, need something else, but we do it in love. We do it with gentleness. We do it with kindness. We do it with patience. Um, saying, Lord, I want to be sustained by your words. So dear brothers and sisters, in whatever trial you're going through, Please receive payment. Please receive payment from God for it. That's words of God to speak to you in that time. And let's become worshipers. Let's not be anxious when we see the hole in our heart. Let's not be anxious when we feel the feelings in our heart. Okay, it's a sign of the hole. God created us in our image, in his image. And it's God saying, come to me, come to me, and um, I will give you rest. So that's the beautiful thing that God has for us. God will do in our lives. He'll um, do something new. Rivers in the desert. Um, highways where there's been a wilderness. Let's keep believing God. God is good. God's the good God who created that hole. He'll fill that hole by speaking to me. And when he speaks to me, I will obey. I hope that's clear, dear brothers and sisters. Don't be afraid of the hole. Look for the word of God. And he wants to sow in your seed and then obey it.